point. So we are starting with uh, looking at the mass of the earth and dust of the earth. Estimation of mass and density of the earth. Uh, you'll copy the notes in the order of how I teach you. What I finish here is what you copy. So if the mass of the earth uh, can be estimated, then it can be estimated in regard to what body it controls are easily around it. And among the bodies the earth controls, the earth controls the moon. So if you consider the earth of mass, capital M, and then you consider a moon of mass, small m, then if you know the period, the period of the moon around the earth is approximately 27 point, point six days. Then the radius of the moon from the earth is equal to 3.8 times 10 to the power eight meters. Now, if I am to show you this illustration, if this is our earth, I told you the radius is measured from the center of the earth up to where the moon is. We are going to discuss satellites and we shall see that a satellite is an object, is an object which rotates around a given planet. So whereby our, our moon behaves as what we call a natural satellite of mass small m and our earth has a mass capital M. And the radius between the two is R and in that sense, for the radius of rotation, this can be in position to hold the mass at that constant radius, and that is the mass of the moon, which is not changing radius from time and again. In that sense, we provide a centripetal force to the moon, but this centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force of attraction between the Earth and the moon, which is given by Newton's equation, which is capital GMM out of R squared. Because small m is the mass of the moon, we can divide off the small m, and then we can make v squared be equal to capital G M R out of R squared. I can lose this R by division with this point. But V from circular motion is equal to omega R, which omega is two pi over capital T times R. When I square it, I will get V squared is four pi squared R squared over the period squared is equal to capital G M out of R. Therefore, capital G M is going to be equal to four pi squared R to the cube divided by the period squared. And the question wants us to find the mass of the earth the mass of the earth, remember, I'd assume is capital M, is going to be equal to four pi squared R cubed divided by capital G, capital T squared. So this is the equation for mass of the what? Mass of the earth. Or for any planet with its moons that are revolving around it. Now, having seen the derivation of the equation, we are now good to go and substitute and then find the mass of the earth so we substitute to find capital M, we shall have four times 22 out of seven, but the whole of this is going to be squared times the radius, which is 3.8 times 10 to the power eight, close brackets to this tube, divided mm -hmm. by the period is 27.6 days. So it is 27.6 times 24 hours for each day times 3,600 seconds for each hour, but all this is square. When you compute with a calc, what is the value of mass of the earth? So we know how heavy our earth is.
three point Exponent fourteen. Are you sure? That's a very wrong answer compared to the mass of the earth. You sure that's the answer you're getting? Nine point zero nine Uh-huh. 9.0115 times 10 exponent 20. Ah. You are all wrong. Another one. Come on, I just recompute. I need to get to know the answer you're realizing. So I'm getting the answer, the first answer. Are you sure? Oh, yes, I've seen the problem. I missed the capital G, universal gravitational constant, 6.67 eh? and uh, uh. power negative 11. Now, compute again. I knew something was wrong. Five point seven one. Exponent twenty four. Very correct. Sometimes they give the mass as that. Sometimes they round it off. The mass of the earth is six point zero times ten to the power twenty four. It is. It is a constant. They can ask you to show that the mass of the earth is that. Okay. So if you use twenty eight days, you, I think you get close to that. You use 30 days, you get something slightly above six. So then from there, if you have got the mass, we can also be asked to find the density of the earth. Remember density? Excuse density me, is equal to mass over volume. Now we know the mass already, but the volume should be got from four over three pi r radius of the earth to the cube. Okay, now since we have realized the masses in this expression, I can first deal with this as expressions. For example, they can ask you to derive the density, maybe not in calculations, but to say prove that the density is this for the R. Let me first try to show you that. If I substitute here, I'll have four pi squared R to the cube divided by capital G T to the square divided by four over three pi R radius of the earth to the cube. I can lose the four with this four. I can lose one pi with this pi. The three can go up, then it becomes what? Three pi, the radius between the earth and the moon, divided by capital G T squared times radius of the earth cube. So in actual sense, one can see this as density of the earth, is equal to three pi out of capital G, capital T squared times the radius of the moon from the earth, the ratio of the radius of the moon to the earth to the radius of the earth cubed. And also they can ask you find the ratio of the radius of the moon from the earth to the radius of the earth. Then you find the tube root of that if you know the density. So why I wanted to bring this derivation 
they can manipulate a question from here in any way or the other. So can we now substitute and find the density? Density of the earth is going to be three times 22 over seven divided by 6.67 times 10 power negative 11 times the time, which is 27.6 times 10, 24 times 3,600. All this is squared. Then times the ratio of radius, which was 3.8 times 10 power 8 divided by radius of the earth, which is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6, close bracket. Now all of this is tubed. Get us the answer. That is what we can use to find the density of the earth. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Um, why did you equate mv squared over r to g mm over r squared? Why did I equate? Yeah, um, mv squared over r to g okay. mm over r squared. This is this is an equation for centripetal force. Were you attending the centripetal lessons? No. You should visit my YouTube channel for for circular motion, and then find out about the about the centripetal force. This is called a centripetal okay. force. The centripetal force keeps bodies moving in circular paths. Yeah, if you look at this image, you see this image? Yes? yes. Mercury here has its own yes. circle, it covers. Venus has its own circle. The Earth has its own circle. Mars has its own circle. The, uh, the asteroid belt has its own circle. Jupiter has it. So all these bodies that are moving, they are moving around the sun. Now, why do, do you need to ask yourself this question? Why don't they leave? The only reason why they can't leave, it is because they are all experiencing a force which is acting towards the center of the earth. So when bodies are moving in circular paths, they experience what we call centripetal force. Even vehicles, when they are negotiating a bend, even border border riders, when they are negotiating a bend, a bend is what you call a corner or a circular part of a road. When the car is negotiating, you feel like you're turning, it's because you're experiencing the centripetal force. Okay? So even these bodies, they experience a the centripetal force, which is acting towards the what? The center of the sun. So all of them are experiencing centripetal what? force. Now, the centripetal force, if this is the big body controlling them with capital M, uh, let me assume I'm using Jupiter. Jupiter is very small compared to the sun. So it means the force of attraction between the sun and Jupiter divided by the radius square, which is, comes from Newton's law, is providing us, this is the electrostat, this is the gravitational force of attraction between Jupiter and the sun. So the gravitational force of attraction between Jupiter and the sun is what provides us with the centripetal force. If you want more details about this, why I say it is equal to that, it is because in actual sense, this is what happens. Uh, the force of attraction overcomes no force. There is no force this way that is refusing this body to stay in this circle. Overcomes nothing to give us the resultant force. But this resultant force is a resultant force of mass times acceleration. The acceleration in circular paths is called centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration is given by V squared out of R. So this is how it comes to MV squared out of R. And then FA is the force of attraction, which I've already showed you is capital GMN over R squared. So that is how we came to conclude on that equation. Were you there in the previous class? The previous class, I derived this idea. I thought by now people have used, got used to it because it is going to be part of us until we finish gravitation. So everyone should know this relation very well. And K plus laws, they are always going to come back. Okay, Madam, have I answered your question, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so I've showed you how we got. Uh, I want to hear the answers for density. Someone give me an answer for density.
Yes, density, someone give me an answer. Yeah, and then the other thing, be very sensitive with the way you press your calculators here. I told you if you get a challenge with pressing the calc, first simplify those big powers because you raise them to very big powers and perhaps sometimes the calculators cannot handle those situations. So it's better you simplify the powers bit by bit, then you finally handle the entire sort of, uh, what solution at once. Someone give me an answer. 5,000. Yeah, it's fine. So, yeah, but this one has, has, has missed something small. The density of the earth is approximately 5,500 kilograms per meter cubed. So whoever has got an answer which is close to that. So the five, the other one has given me five one. Five one hundred is very small. Mm -hmm. Has anyone got something close to that? Five point four three exponent or oh, five point four five exponent three. Those are correct answers. Okay, so I expect people to get that result. So if you've managed to get that result, then you can go and drive something else, which also still concerns our earth, according to what we are supposed to follow in our notes. So having discussed the mass of the earth, the depth of the earth, the next item to discuss is the relationship between acceleration due to gravity on the Earth and capital G. Yeah, that is the relationship between small g and capital G. Relationship. Between small g and capital G. We have seen what small g is. We all know small g. We have seen it right from all level. Eh? That one, we normally call it what? Acceleration due to gravity. Rate of change of velocity of a freely falling body and a constant, a constant force field due to the gravitational attraction of a given planet. Yeah, we shall come to a point of, the, of discussing G entirely, small g for a given planet. Now, if you consider a body of mass, small m, if a body of mass, small m, is placed on the Earth's surface, 
It's placed on the AFIS surface. Then, this body is going to look like this. You know the earth is a sphere. Then we get a body. And we place it here on the surface of the earth. First of all, the earth itself has its own radius, which is the radius of the earth, RAE, from the center. When a body is on the earth's surface, it experiences a force, experiences a force of attraction, mg. Whereas the mass of the earth is concentrated at the center. So for that reason, uh, the body that is on the earth's surface is going to experience a force. So the force of attraction, the force of attraction due to the center of the earth or the center of the planet is going to be capital GM, mass of the earth times the small mass of the body divided by the radius of the earth squared. With this, it is going to give us, because this body is not moving, eh, it is stationary on the earth, then it is going to overcome the weight mg. And by that, the resultant force is going to be zero. And thus, when a body is on the earth's surface, it's not experiencing a centripetal force, but it is experiencing a force of attraction from the center of the earth. So for that reason, capital GM E small m or is over R squared is always equal to mg. With this, you can now see that capital GM times of the earth times small m is equal to mg or is over R squared. I can lose the small m of the body. And with this, the g on the earth's surface is going to be equal to the inverse of gravitational constant times the mass of the earth divided by the radius of the earth squared. When you look at all these three terms, they are all what? Constants. If they are all constant, then G is constant. On the earth is what? On the earth is surface. But in case you want to talk about uh, the relationship between G and capital G, then small g would have been directly proportional to capital G. But because they are all constants, there's not now matter so much. So what we wanted to show out of this is how they are related as per the equation. And even we can use this to find the value of G itself, small g. Let us try it out. Uh, but for any other planet, G is directly proportional to the universal gravitational constant. Uh, this is for any other planet on any other any other planet. For example, like Uranus, if you've seen, there's a video I think I've shared for Uranus. I don't know that you've seen it. Uranus is very cold because the sun rays take long to reach there. And uh, when you look at it, it has uh, a very big gravity also, whereby if you go there, it is not so easy for you to escape. Yeah. And the same applies to Saturn. Its gravity is very high. The latest, the one, one of the images which we have got closely from Saturn when the space vehicle tried to reach there, when it was passing through its atmosphere, it vamushed, it burnt out. So they only burn out with the reasons we shall see why they burn out. Someone asked me that question one time on the group. We shall see why bodies can burn out through given atmospheres. So for now, when you substitute, you can have G on the Earth's surface can be got from 6.67 times 10 power negative 11 times the mass of the Earth, which is 6.0 times 10 to the power 24, divided by the radius of the Earth, which is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6, all this raised to the square. We can confirm G and get us the answer. Someone please compute and give me the value of G. It must be approximately the value we know. If you get a different one, stop, start working again. You should not deviate a lot on that one.
Nine point seven seven zero five. Nine point seven seven zero five. Nine point. You've said nine point. Seven seven zero five. Wow. Ah, why is it? I expected nine point eight. Nine point. Okay, you can round it off to nine point eight. Okay, so it's approximately close to nine point eight one which we know as our standard acceleration due to gravity. Now, all these derivations of these constants that I'm doing, they're examining. They can ask you to show the density of the Earth is 5,500. Show acceleration due to gravity on the Earth is 9.81 meters per second square. Show that mass of the sun is 2.0 times 10 power negative 30. Show that the mass of the Earth is this. So all these can be asked. Don't take it for granted that because they are constants, uh -uh, nothing else can be asked about them they can ask you to derive them, okay? So a new heading after this, we are going to have what we call the artificial satellites. Is that the spelling of artificial? The artificial satellites. Unless someone has a question before what I can go for. Okay. Those of us who have never seen a, a satellites, welcome aboard. So you can see these images very well, I guess. These are what we call artificial satellites. The satellites that are made by man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we call them geosynchronous satellites. Sometimes we call them geostationary satellites. We shall discuss them as them and we see what their relevance is. Some of them are defensive systems. Some of them are telecom systems. Some of them are stations. There's what they call the ISIS. Yeah? ISIS is the International Space Station. Uh, what is the I? It is International Space Station, I think, uh, where all rockets have to go. Uh, just take it like if it's like a fuel station and all rockets have to go to the fuel station there. Then they can go refuel, do service, and then they proceed to their, their travel. And the first people who made one was, I think, the Russians. Uh, the first space station was for Russia. I don't know that they have ever built another one. But we were knowing very well that Russians are the only ones who had a space station in space. But uh, if you look at satellites like this one, they revolve around the Earth. They move around the Earth. But then also we have what we call natural satellites. Eh? Natural satellites. Natural satellites, if I can go to natural satellite, the definition of an artificial satellite is a body that revolves around a given planet due to the gravitational force of attraction of that particular what? planet. So these ones which are around the Earth, of course, we only have them around the Earth. We don't know whether other planets also have, but according to what NASA has been doing, they could send to other planets, then they revolve around the planets, then they pick their images, they pick their sounds. For example, I was watching a video here and they pick sounds of, Uranus, of, of Saturn and Saturn had very loud sounds which we are coming from its uh, magnetic field, its aurora, northern lights and southern lights, like we have northern lights of, of, the, of the world, of Earth, and southern lights. But for them, their lights were giving what? Giving out sound, producing sound, due to the magnetic interactions of the, of the ions or electrons from the, of the ions coming from the sun. So you would find that a, a satellite can be sent or a body can be sent there, a space vehicle, to monitor. So it moves around the entire planet, monitoring what is happening. 
and that becomes what we call a satellite. So even here we have satellites that revolve around the, uh, the Earth. As you can see those images, they keep moving around the sun. Like I've told you, some are for defensive mechanisms, some are for security uh, details for given countries, then some are for, uh, for example, NASA is ready with a satellite, with a, with a machines that can easily blow up asteroids that are coming in the direction of the Earth. So some satellites can play such a role. Other satellites are used for telecommunications. They can play also such a role. Others can be used for running drones. All the telecommunication we have of late, it first goes to satellites and it comes back. It's just so recent that we are trying to build fiber cables, especially for the phone calls, for the messages, WhatsApp, social media, so that we get we stop interference from satellites. Otherwise, when we have interference up there, maybe through the systems, through the clouds, a lot of maybe charged clouds are up there, we might get interference from the satellite. Otherwise, on the earth, we have these as receivers. You can check this one out. This is a receiver receiving telecommunication from space. Okay, so it received information coming from the satellite. So someone may be on in the world here. In Uganda, this satellite dish is in Impoma. Okay? Of course, this is in USA, but let us, let us assume this is Impoma. And someone, who, for example, wants to make a phone call here in USA. Then there is a must here in USA. Someone is here, makes a phone call. The phone call signals are picked by this nearest mast. Then it projects them to space. Then it meets a satellite. Then this satellite retransmits them to the another. We call them geosynchronous satellites. If this is the Earth, there can be satellite one, satellite two, satellite three, mm -hmm. satellite four. There are very many satellites up there. Mm -hmm. Very many of them. So when these satellites transmit information, they go on exchanging it to other satellites until the satellite which is close to the coordinates you press. That's why when you're pressing a phone call, press, for example, plus, plus one, I think it's what? It's UK, USA. Plus 44 is UK. Plus 256 is Uganda. So someone in US, if wants to call us, will press plus 256. That is why the call cannot go astray or to any other country apart from Uganda. Why? Because that is our country code from our satellite, what? Our satellite GPS location. So, in that sense, information is going to be transmitted to the satellites until we reach a satellite which is close to the code we pressed. If this is the satellite which is called close to the code in Uganda, it is going to retransmit the information back to Uganda. Then it will come and pass through from our receiver. Then our receiver will transmit it to a given uh, telecom receiver which is MTN, which is Airtel. That's why they also have different codes because when it reaches there, it goes to the immediate service mm -hmm. provider. Yeah, so calls, messages, they all have to go through here. And that is where they have a sieve. That is where government can monitor you from. That is where if you're talking bad about the government, they can track your phone call, your messages, yeah? the traditional messages, SMS. SMS phone calls, we can get you from there and you can be easily handled in one way or the other if you're saying things that can incite people or incite violence. But in one sense or the other, that is coming from what we call an artificial satellite, like I've told you. So these are artificial satellites, and those are some of their advantages or uses. They will ask us to explain mm -hmm. how they work, and also they might ask us to talk about their advantages as we shall see as we go on discussing some of these items. Others can be used to control drones for still defensive systems on the Earth's surface or for wars and for fightings. Now, most of the superpowers you know, they have satellites in space. Even Rwanda, I heard it has a satellite, eh? but I think in Africa we have very few people with satellites. But all superpowers you know, yeah, they have satellites. So you can see up here, we have what we call the spy satellites. We have satellite technology, Spunkin, Satellite One. Yeah, there are those which are used for good stuff. Even India. India, it's, though it's a poor country, but it's a big country. I think we, it's not poor. 
it's not, it's, I think it's, it is in the middle stage. Those of you of economics, where is India? It is somewhere. It is not a superpower. It is not a first world. It is not a very poor country. But it has the very big, biggest number of most people, poor countries in the world. I mean, most poor people in the world. Because they have over 1.2 or 3 billion people. But out of those, around 800 million are the poorest in the world. But the other very few people who are very rich, they have every, those who are rich are very extraordinarily rich. And India can make everything in the world. Starting from satellites, they can build satellites. India can build cars. Right now, it's the number one producer of cars and distributor. It brought a contract from, was it? Yeah? Oh, it was Jaguar, I think. Jaguar was number one, then it bought from Jaguar. But India can produce all these things you see. That's why you see here, they're talking about the Indian satellite. Then I heard of Rwanda, but I'm not sure about Rwanda. Should we take a look here and see? Let's check on African countries. How many have satellites? Yeah. African countries, African countries with satellites. Huh. I said they are just bringing for us. Mm -hmm. Shame on us. I'm not seeing, even the answer has not been okay. I've seen here satellite nations, okay. Yeah, here. Ah. Satellite nations are nations that are taken by independent, but under the close control from the Soviet Union, they also come. Uh, they, they are also communist and have the same policies as the USSR. Ah, this one is a very funny statement which has come up. I think why they were called they said these ones. This is U USSR, Russia. For my Soviet Union, eh? why they were being called uh, satellite nations? It's because Russia, I think, was one of the first countries to put up satellites in space, and it could monitor these countries using satellites. So they called them satellite what? Satellite nations. So um, I think I've showed you some of these. I think you can see this very beautiful image, yeah, showing you how a satellite is trying to work, get messages from here, go down. Eh? The same applies to our areas. You've seen areas on TV sets. Eh? They, are, they are receivers. Where are they receiving? What are they receiving? They are receiving electromagnetic radiation from space. Okay. So those are all advantages. So I'm showing, I'm asking, I'm telling you, sometimes when you have what we call satellite phones, satellite phones don't need network. That air money, UTLs money, AfriCell, uh uh. A cell phone, I mean a satellite phone, you can call from anywhere. Hmm? You don't even need to buy what? Data, airtime, uh -uh. you just connect to the satellite. As long as you can pick signals from the satellite, you can call any country code you want to. That is what they use in, uh, in wars and rebels. That's what they use. Then also, more on this, uh, people who go, when you look at most of those very strong terrorists, mm -hmm. say, they use satellite phones and they do not be, they don't want to use these normal phones you use. And even they don't want to be on the surface of the earth. That is why the Afghanistans were always hiding underground. The Bin Ladens, though, those hide underground. The Saddams all went underground. Why? The satellite cannot reach them. Hmm? So satellites, drones cannot see them in that sense. But if they're on the surface, then they can locate them using the GPS and they can fire wherever they are. So they keep moving through underground. So basically, that's uh, the beauty of our satellites that we have been talking about today. Uh, this one is just another beautiful image showing you how a satellite picks images, I mean, picks information from the Earth as it is being sent. Then there's also this other one, which can also explain very well what I was trying to say. It picks information from the Earth, sends it to the closest satellite. The closest satellite sends it to another satellite. Another satellite projects the information to another one. Then after the information is brought back to the Earth's surface, as per the codes we have pressed for the different countries. So more of these images and uh, more write-ups or readings you want to make on artificial satellites, please don't hesitate to visit Mr. Google. He can guide you on more of these items. Let me finalize with this image. See what that image is all about? 
So we have very many satellites up there. I think let us get to know how many we have in space. How many satellites? Okay. How many satellites orbit the Earth? Yes. You're going to be shocked. Yeah. Where is my answer? Come on. How many satellites orbit the Earth? Uh, all these are satellites. When they're in space, they're seen as if they are Mm -hmm. I'm looking for one answer, but I can't see the right up. Every satellite will be in the earth. Many satellites will be in the earth. Okay, let us see. Ah, uh, satellite, satellite map shows. Are you seeing this? It shows we have over 19,300 satellites orbiting the earth. With view satellites by country, type, size, launch, date, orbit, period, inclination, satellite shows trajectory of that. So they are quite very many. 19,000. You know what that means? Yeah. It's close to the size of asteroids we have, asteroids that are in the asteroid belt that are revolving the Earth. They are also around 20,000 yeah. rocks. But anyway. Having seen what satellites are all about, then we have what we call natural satellites. The moon is our natural satellite. If this is our Earth, then you know sometimes you see the moon when it is bigger, then sometimes you see it when it is smaller. Its orbit, when it is revolving here, when it is very far away, it is small. When it is orbiting very close to the Earth, it is big especially when it is starting to come up in the evening. I think today we have the moon. You look at the east, you will see. It will be big as it comes out from the horizon. When it gets to your head, it is very small. It is because by the time it reaches your head, it has traveled a longer ellipse. Then the other thing is that um, if you want to see these artificial satellites, I'd forgotten to mention this. Make sure if you have a clear sky, there are no clouds. Eh? Just sit in your compound. If you have a, a mattress, if you have a mat, lie down and look up for 10 minutes. You'll see something moving close to the size of a star. It will either be whitish or bluish. Yeah? And it will be moving constantly. And as it is moving, it will be moving relative to you. You will see it as if your earth is moving, even if it is also moving. What you will be seeing is the satellite. Okay. Then uh, last time I also never talked about some of these stars. The stars we see, uh, of course, the sun is yellow according to what we see. But yellow stars, all those stars you see in the size in the color of the sun are what we call the dove stars, one of the weakest stars. So our weakest star is the star which is holding our solar system. Then the biggest stars are those ones which are blue. Remember luminosity? Eh? Blue ones are the hottest biggest, most energetic. Then there are some three blue stars you see on the sky, which are always in the same line. They are always in the same line, same distance away. Yeah, they have the same everything, those stars. And they must be having another very big body that controls them to be moving in that radius without losing it. So I wanted also to chip in that information so that in case you read about them, you'll find them impressive. Now, having heard of all that information about the satellites, there's a few write-up which comes here. That is, that's the definition which I mentioned. Now, what comes in most here is the calculations. And the calculations are going to be in a way that we are going to have a satellite that is somewhere away from the Earth. Then we are going to have the radius of the Earth. We are going to have the satellite at a given height away from the Earth. But remember, I told you, if you're measuring the radius of the circular path, which this satellite is going to follow, yeah? Then you measure the radius from the center of the Earth up to the satellite. And this radius we have been calling it small what? Small Earth. 
But as this satellite moves around the Earth, because they are revolving around the Earth, as they move, they are going to experience a force of attraction from the Earth over a distance R squared. And this force of attraction is what is going to provide their centripetal force. But having it in mind that actually this R is the radius, which is equal to, but R is going to be equal to R E plus what? Plus H. And with that height, you can be asked to find the height of the satellite above the Earth's surface. Is equal to mv squared out of r e plus h. So key information is required here on the radius because people normally think it's the radius of the earth. If you consider the radius of the earth, you are predicting that the satellite is on the earth's surface. Yet actually the satellite is at a given height above the earth is what? Above the earth's surface. For that reason, we can be in position to see that every time we are to deal with a satellite, we shall have the force of attraction between the satellite and the planet, and also we shall have the centripetal force that this planet is actually experiencing. So with that, we can now go ahead and look at some examples that can talk about uh, some of these satellites. Okay, the question here, if no questions, let me write down this number. An example, a satellite is launched in a circular orbit. You know, there is what we call a space license. Eh? Those countries which have satellites up there have a license they give to whoever wants to launch a satellite there. You don't just launch your satellite into space. That, hey, you're a great physicist from Nabisunsa, yes. Oh, from Gombe, yes. From Uganda, okay. What do you want to do? I want to launch a satellite. There's a guy I saw one time, even I saw the vice president visiting him, saying he's going to send the satellite around the earth, and then they wait for it to come back. And then I wondered whether even they had got a license, whether they had contacted NASA. The moment it goes there and they do not know exactly where it's coming from, and they don't know anything about it, I've told you there are defensive systems of satellites up there. They will burn it up. So you have to get the license, you pay, then it can fly. With that, besides that, no one will allow you to go there. Someone says, go back to the previous page, okay. But don't worry, the notes are coming, but just go and write down the notes of what I'm discussing. I think they sent them already. So the number says the satellite is launched in a circular orbit about the equator, about the equator. At a height of 3.6 times 10 to the power of four kilometers above the surface of the earth. Given that, given that the mass of the earth, given that the mass of the earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power, 24 kilograms and its radius and its radius is 6 400 kilometers find roman 1 radius of the orbit Roman two, speed with which the satellite is launched. Roman four, a Roman three, period 
of this satellite. Those satellites are designed and they are running at a very terrible speed, by the way. Yeah? The speed at which they move is very fast because sometimes uh, we get what we call a parking orbit. Yeah? We shall see what a parking orbit is, yeah? which is a park in space for a satellite. And that parking orbit is only experienced when the period of rotation of the satellite is equal to the period of rotation of the Earth, which is 24 hours. So it's a very fast uh, object. So the first thing is we need to get the radius of the orbit, R. I've already showed you that R is got from the radius of the Earth plus the height. And according to this, the radius of the Earth is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 plus the height, which is 3.6 times 10 to the power 7. OK? So with that, can we get the answer? What do we get? Someone please compute. Four point two four exponent seven. It has. The second question says the speed with which the satellite is launched. Now, when the satellite is launched, I showed you that if this is the Earth, then the satellite has been launched. Now uh, we have seen the orbit. This is our R. So we shall expect the force of attraction, which is capital GM M out of R squared to provide us with the centripetal force. But remember, small m is the mass of the satellite, so we can lose the small m. We are asking for V, we can lose one R, therefore V is the square root of capital GM out of R. With this, I can find V as the root of 6.67 times 10 power negative 11 times mass of the earth, which is 6.0 times 10 to the power 24, all divided, eh, 2006, they gave us, it was given, it was given as um, 5.98, all divided by the radius, which we have discovered as 4.24 times 10 to the power 7. Someone press the calc rightly and get the value of V. We haven't had any boy. What's up? Are the boys here? What are they different kids? Mm -hmm. Boys, are you there? Any boy there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was about to worry that I sent a wrong name. Okay, come on, give me an answer. Three hundred sixty-seven point. Three hundred sixty-seven. Three thousand sixty-seven. Three thousand sixty-seven meters per second. Is that what we get? They are this much. Not exact. What have you got? Point what? Three thousand seven point one one nine. Okay. Wait one two. 
You know, these, these, those the small places are very vital for those bodies because those bodies are big. They are bigger than your schools. They are bigger than your districts. Yeah? No, no, okay, districts are very huge. They are bigger than your villages, maybe. Okay, so the other thing is um, period of the satellite. Period, remember, we can get V is equal to omega what? R, which omega is 2 pi out of capital T times R from circular motion. Therefore, the period can be got from 2 pi R divided by the velocity, which is going to be 2 times 22 out of 7 times R, which is 4.24 times 10 to the power 7, all divided by the velocity V, which velocity V is 3067.12. Someone confirm the period. Eighty-six thousand eight hundred ninety-three. Eighty-six thousand eight hundred ninety-three point nine nine. Okay, let's stop at four. Hope the rest you also confirming that. So take that screenshot. We have one more example and we close. Shall we start from there next time. So oh, this question is quite long. Let me put it on this other page as example two. Calculate the ratio of the mass of the earth To that of the sun. <laughs> Given that the moon moves around the earth given that the moon moves around the earth in a circular orbit in a circular <laughs> orbit of radius 4.0 times 10 to the power of 5 kilometers with a period of 27 days and the orbit radius Orbital radius of the Earth around the Sun is 1.5 times 10 to the power 8 kilometers with a period of 365 days. Okay, 
They can ask you to find the ratio. Remember, I told you earlier on that they can ask you to find ratios of given masses or given bodies. Now, the thing here is they have given you every body and its control, its controlling body. For example, if you start with the Earth, Earth and the Moon, we see that our Earth is controlling the Moon, and the radius is known it can be good and as it controls the moon we can have mass of the moon times the velocity with which the moon rotates divided by the radius is equal to the gravitational force of attraction between the earth and the moon out of the radius between them square <laughs> with this you can lose the mass of the moon with that then you can get to see that v squared, remember we saw is four pi squared, r squared out of t was t squared. So if I lose one r, I will have this as equal to capital G mass of the earth over r. With this note, you can get capital G m e for the earth is equal to four pi r to the cube divided by the period squared. Let's call this period one, the period of rotation of the moon about the earth. So this is the moon, this is the what? The earth. Now, what if we are to consider the sun? What is moving around the sun? Guys, yeah, what moves around the sun? According to this question, the earth. the earth, okay? So this will be our earth. If you, someone was to show what was happening, uh, there is a kamun which rotates our earth, which we also say we can also handle this one. Okay? But this earth, the sun says I can handle the earth, I can handle Uranus, I can handle Venus, all those ones I can handle. That's what the sun is saying. So this is the radius of the sun from the earth. Uh, with this sense, we can now have the force of attraction between the sun and the earth is the mass of the earth times the velocity with which the earth rotates. Let me call this V2, this was V1. Over the radius of the sun and the earth is going to give us the force of attraction between the sun and the earth or is over the radius of the sun. And the earth i can lose this with one i can lose i can lose uh we want to find we can lose the mass of the earth with this one then i can see that v1 prime i mean v2 squared is going to be four pi squared radius of the sun squared out of the period squared is going to be equal to capital g mass of the sun squared over radius of the sun now this is going to give us capital GM mass of the sun is a four pi to the square RS to the cube divided by the period to the square. And this is going to give us equation two. If this is equation two, what are we having? We can divide. They said the ratio of mass of the, of the earth to that of the sun. So we expect mass of the earth capital GM out of capital GM mass of the sun is going to be equal to four pi R of the moon. Okay, let me call it, leave it as R cubed over T1 squared divided by four pi. This is square, this pi is squared here. I missed a square. There is a square here. Four pi squared, radius of the sun to the earth cubed divided by the period of the square of the period of rotation of the earth about the sun. I can vamoosh the four pi squared. I can vamoosh the capital G. With this, they can even ask you to show that the ratio of the mass of the earth to the mass of the sun is equal to the period goes up, okay, which gives us T2 out of T1. Both of these ones have been 
squared times the radii. We have the radius of the moon out of the radius of the sun. It is also what? Chubut. Then you can substitute. Be, be very sensitive with this illustration because they can ask you to make any of these three to be the question. They can ask you to find the ratio of the period of rotation of the moon about the earth to the period of rotation of the earth about the sun. Find the ratio of the radius of the moon from the earth to the ratio to the radius of the earth to the sun. They are all there. So we can now substitute. We shall have the period of the moon is 27 days. 27 uh, times 24 times 36 Canada divided by three. Mm -hmm. This is 365 because T2 was for the earth and the sun. Then the moon was T1, which is 27 times 24 times 3600. When you close the bracket and square, get the red eye. The red eye one was what? Oh, here is the problem now, red eye. R was equal to the mass of the earth, which is six point, radius of the earth, 6.4 times 10 power six plus 4.0 times 10 to the power seven. What answer do we get in meters? Then the radius of the sun from the earth, we're going to see is 1.5 times 10 to the power eight. So we convert to kilometers, it is times 10 to the power 11. So this is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11. That one is known. Whereas the other one they have said, uh, the moon moves around the earth in a circular orbit. Hey, okay. The radius was given. We don't need to add to, to add on the radius of the earth. They said in a circular orbit. Now we need to understand those statements. When they say in a circular orbit, they are meaning from the center, meaning you don't add on the radius of the earth. Whereas if they say from the earth's surface, the orbit of the moon of the moon to the earth from the earth's surface is, is at a distance of this to that, it is the height. So when it is radius. It means it is coming from the center of the earth, of that planet. So this is going to be 4.0 times 10 to the power 7. But the whole of this is tubed. Now, when you look at this one for the, for the time period, even if you never converted, and you just said 365 divided by 27, you would still realize the ratio of mass of the earth to the mass of the sun what answer we get using the calculator. So that is cheaper if you derive up to there. The other ones have long substitutions, which can make your calc even mislead you. Me. Yes, please. Okay, yeah, the question, mm. is it the, that radius of the, the, of the, of the, of the, mm. the power of five, not seven. Okay, it's oh. exponential. Five. And A, it is power five, not so. You have to convert to, meters so it is supposed to be to the power eight I made an error but thank you for that you see you have to convert it even this one i've converted it how come you've not asked me about this one being power 11. Yeah? it's because i've also converted the exponent eight by adding one power what? 11. okay so calculator what answer do we get Three point four six five exponent negative. Three point four six five times center power. Hmm? Power what? Negative six. Negative six. Negative six. Hmm. 
That is approximately what? Three, four, six, five. Uh, out of what? Out of one billion, okay. It's okay, this can be an answer, don't worry. So basically I've showed you how those ratios can be interpreted. Unless if someone has a question. I think that is enough for today. Uh, so next time try to read about um, gravitational field strength and more calculations on these. If you find, check out the question bank and see if you can get some questions on satellites which are above the earth's surface. And you, if you have a challenge, you can post it and we take a look. Any other question before we can close? Please don't forget also to take notes. When you take the notes now, do those examples which are in those notes and see how best you can have them. So with that, we'll have a wonderful evening. Teacher. Yes, please. I have a question. Teacher, are those diagrams really necessary when, you're, when you've when you been asked? When you're doing a ratio, number. Is it necessary to include this diagram? Not really. Yes. Are, have they challenged you or what? You don't want to interpret using the diagrams. You want to cram. The diagrams can guide your interpretation. No. <laughs> the diagrams can guide your interpretation, OK? Mm -hmm. But they are not a must. But don't you see that when I use the diagram, you understand very well. If I was just writing yes. equations, okay, force of attraction is equal to attractive centripetal force. Huh? You'd be like, what's wrong with teacher? Eh? You know? But if you know that there is a force of attraction on this planet, then there's a centripetal force experienced by this one, then these forces have to be equal to each other. Yes, this is true. Okay. So they're just guidance as to the right equations and procedure. Okay. Thank you, no, thank you teacher. You're welcome. No further questions, we can continue.